now 41. That's what I call music. Choco Cornflakes, the world's favourite cornflakes combined with real milk chocolate and low fat too. They're Chocodoodaloo! Announcing home prize Letty's creation. New family sized jars! Some feel that as they're big jars, we should make a big announcement. But I think they speak for themselves. Packed full of the finest ingredients like succulent pineapple and juicy tomatoes. There's enough to satisfy the whole family. Delicious. Who needs to make a song and dance about them? We don't all share the same kitchen, but if we did, you'd find we're not so different in the morning. On with the kettle, out with the coffee. Nescafe Original. Pure coffee in a cup. How could it possibly get any better? Well, we'll tell you. We've made a richer coffee. We've made a smoother coffee. Those special beans now release even more flavor in your cup. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better. Richer, smoother Nescafe Original. Good morning. Nescafe. Commercial Union and General Accident are now CGU. That's the background. Here's the future. One in a thousand children are born with Down syndrome. The condition is permanent, but should plastic surgery be used to disguise the signs? We have to take away the mask because society is cruel. Changing appearances for themselves or for us. Changing faces tonight, 10.40 on ITV. You're watching Carlton from London. Now, the news. ITN News at 10 with Trevor MacDonald. The Queen's speech consigns hereditary pairs to history. Mystery deepens over reports of Iraqi grenade attack. Two nights on, police fears for missing Charlotte. George Michael pays the price for his video protest. And Michael Owen's battle to keep Liverpool in Europe. Good evening. The silence in which the Queen's speech is traditionally heard was broken today when the Queen announced the bill to throw the hereditary peers out of the House of Lords. There were shouts of hear, hear from Labour MPs and what sounded like a rumble of protest from peers. The Queen's speech outlines the government's legislative programme for the new session of Parliament. Besides the controversial reform of the House of Lords, other bills announced today will deal with welfare reform, with all new claimants having to attend interviews before they get any benefit. Widows' pensions going to widowers for the first time. Provision for pension sharing on divorce. And the introduction of a new second pension, the so-called stakeholder pension. On health, the government proposes to end the internal market in the NHS. Set up primary care groups in place of GP fund holding and raise standards of care by keeping all hospital doctors under scrutiny. On crime and justice, youth courts will be overhauled and there'll be new measures to protect vulnerable witnesses. And MPs will have a free vote on reducing the age of consent for male homosexuals from 18 to 16. As six days of debate on the Queen's speech began, the Prime Minister said its key themes had been modernization and fairness, the leader of the opposition, William Haig, said not one of the bills announced today had anything to do with the priorities of the people of Britain. Our political editor, Michael Brunson, reports. Some fine-tuning suggested by Buckingham Palace did little to change the overall pageantry. 
so there were fewer people in Her Majesty's procession, and Black Rod was sent on his way to the Commons a little faster to face the traditional show of MPs' independence. The greatest change, though, was the ever-increasing political content of the speech itself. It even began with a royal soundbite. This is my government's second legislative program. Like the first, it will focus upon the modernization of the country, its institutions, its public services, and its economy. And Perhaps it was that which encouraged some MPs at the back of the Lord's my Chamber to show their approval in an unprecedented way when reform of the Upper House was mentioned. A bill will be introduced to remove the right of hereditary peers to sit and vote in the House of Lords. It will be the first stage in a process of reform to make the House of Lords more democratic and representative. Some Lords had joined the MPs in their hear hears, though there was a counter growl of lordly disapproval too. Once MPs had returned to their own chamber, argument there ranged over the wider field of what was and what wasn't in the speech. In a highly effective display of opposition, William Hague said the speech had dealt with Labour Party priorities Speaker, and not ordinary peoples. Begin. Where, for example, was the bill to bring in John Prescott's integrated transport policy? What's the point of having an integrated transport policy when he can't even integrate it into the government programme? <laughs> well, the Deputy Prime Minister didn't like that. Mr. Hague went on to call the plan to take away hereditary peers' voting rights constitutional vandalism. He thought it was an independent second chamber when it defeated the last government. He used to congratulate it, said it was a victory for common sense. And mentioning the Prime Minister's Sedgefield constituency, so Mr. Hague asked what he was doing about the jobs being lost across the country. And there we have it, the Nero of Sedgefield, who is fiddling with the constitution while jobs burn. Tory backbenchers liked all that and showed it, but Mr. Blair said running the country needed a lot more than a string of good jokes. It was a speech devoid of any serious content at all. Yeah. I mean, it was a six-form debating speech, fine, yeah. but as a speech that was supposed to address the big issues of the day, it was full of diddling and tiddling, but nothing much else. Yeah. However, Mr. Blair's own speech was, for the most part, plodding workaday stuff, though he did hit back strongly over Lord's reform. For him to make the centrepiece of his attack on the government, support for the hereditary peers, only indicates, I'm afraid, that whatever the jokes and the debating, when it comes to the issues of big strategic judgment, he gets them wrong every single time. Perhaps Mr Blair's lower key style was meant to stress the slog of government with bills in the coming year on big issues like welfare reform and the health service. These are the people's priorities. That is the people's agenda. By having nothing whatever to say about it, he showed why he will not be, nor his party, the people's choice. When yeah. his turn came, Paddy Ashdown wanted bills on the single currency and on freedom of information, not the timid stuff he'd heard. Madam Speaker, this is a Queen's speech for, yes, a busy year. But leaving aside the Lords and welfare, we'll be chiefly busy doing rather smaller things because too many of the big things, it seems to us, have been ducked. Each of the three leaders claiming there to know what the public's priorities really are. Health service reform, welfare reform, single currency, House of Lords reform. Over the next 12 months, we shall discover they will all be fought over. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster.